Picked up. Hayward. Caught. Up the field. Eckler into the end zone. Touchdown. Chargers win. Chargers win. So our fans, let's work out now. Come on, let's go. If anybody got your back, I got your back. Yeah, for you sure. Know what I mean? Oh, we about to go crazy. Dominate, it's in our hands. Deep grabs. What a catch wow. by Mike Williams. One-handed grab. Are you kidding? Third down and goal. Wide open, an 84-yard touchdown. Carr is brought down by Ingram. 45-50, touchdown, Charger. And that pass is broken up. Michael Davis moving, and he's going to be dropped. He's sacked. Joey Bosa. Bosa to Keenan Allen, wide open. Cuts back inside. Five, touchdown. Pocket holds up, fumble, and the Chargers recover. 37 yards. Great concentration by the veteran. Here's Carr is going to be brought down with a sack. And that ball is intercepted. They can't cover him. Still on his feet. Touchdown. That is intercepted. There it is. He is dropped. He's got it blocked. Leaping in. Oh. Right sideline into the end zone. Down. Excellent play, Desmond King. Knocked away by Hayward. Wide open is Hunter Henry. Trubisky goes down. It's another sack for Joey Bosa. Jump caught, Keenan Allen. You know what time it is. Has Keenan Allen wide open to the end zone lead. Throws it out the side and the hit is made by number 33. Kicked off, Michael Davis. Here comes Ingram, has him, drops him. Shakes the tackle. That's a first down. Open up. Stop on they damn broke and not there. Out. Understand what I'm saying? Chargers bring some heat. Has time over the middle and it's picked up. Throwing right for the end zone. Henry caught it. Fournette is wrapped up. Hayward caught up the field. Eckler into the end zone. Touchdown. Chargers win. Chargers win. So our fans, let's work out now. Come on, let's go. If anybody got your back, I got your back. Yeah, for you sure. Know what I mean? Oh, we about to go crazy. Dominate, it's in our hands. Deep grab. What a catch wow. by Mike Williams. One-handed grab. Are you kidding? Third down and goal. Wide open, an 84-yard touchdown. Carr is brought down by Ingram. 45-50, touchdown, Charger. And that pass is broken up. Michael Davis moving, and he's going to be dropped. He's sacked. Joey Bosa. Rosa to Keenan Allen, wide open. Cuts back inside. Five, touchdown. Chargers. Pocket holds up. Fumble. And the Chargers recover. 37 yards. Great concentration by the veteran. Here's Carr is going to be brought down with a sack. And that ball is intercepted. They can't cover him. Still on his feet. Touchdown. That is intercepted. There it is. He is dropped. He's got it blocked. Leaping in. Eckler right sideline into the end zone. Down. Excellent play, Desmond King. Knocked away by Hayward. Wide open is Hunter Henry. Trubisky goes down. It's another oh, sack for Joey Bosa. Jump caught, Keenan Allen. You know what time it is. Has Keenan Allen wide open to the end zone lead. Throws it out the side and the hit is made by number 33. Kicked off, Michael Davis. Here comes Ingram, has him, drops him. Shakes the tackle. That's a first down. Open up. Stop on they damn broke and not there. Out. Understand what I'm saying? Chargers bring some team. heat. As time for the middle, and it's going to show that. Throwing right for the end zone. Henry Chargers are conceding. I'm Chris Martin. They were. Caught. They were so excited. Off the field. Eckler into the end zone. Touchdown. Chargers 30 win. Minutes. Chargers win. So our fans, let's work out now. Come on, let's go. If anybody got your back, I got your back. Yeah, for you sure. know what I mean? Oh, we about to go crazy. Dominate, it's in our hands. Deep grabs. What a catch wow. by Mike Williams. One-handed grab. Are you kidding? Third down and goal. Wide open, an 84-yard touchdown. Carr is brought down by Ingram. 45-50, touchdown, Charger. And that pass is broken up. Michael Davis moving, and he's going to be dropped. He's sacked. Joey Bosa. Rosa to Keenan Allen, wide open. Cuts back inside. Five, touchdown. Chargers. Pocket holds up. Fumble. And the Chargers recover. 37 yards. Great concentration by the veteran. Here's Carr is going to be brought down with a sack. And that ball is intercepted. They can't cover him. Still on his feet. Touchdown. That is intercepted. There it is. He is dropped. He's got it blocked. Leaping in. Oh. Neck 
the right sideline, into the end zone. Down. Excellent play, Desmond King. Knocked away by Hayward. Wide open is Hunter Henry. Trubisky goes down, it's another sack for Joey Bosa. Jump, caught, Keenan Allen. You know what time it is. Pass Keenan Allen wide open to the... We got a chance right now to do something special. Oh, my time's done. What's up, Chargers fans? Welcome to Hard Knocks Post Show Live, powered by Pachanga Resort Casino. I'm Kirsten Watson. That, got it right today, is Matt Money Smith, and we are so excited. Yes, we are so excited to have you guys here with us for 30 minutes for the immediate reaction to Hard Knocks. So we're going to do it. We're going to have lots of fun. We'll be here every Tuesday right after the show. So grab a drink. We want you guys to get involved. Send us in your fan questions. Use the hashtag Bolt Up on Twitter. Send those in. We'll get back to that. And let's do this. But first, yeah. Matt, most important thing, a big thank you to our sponsors, Pachanga Resort Casino. Pachanga is open and excited to welcome you back with safety, comfort, and peace of mind on another level. Pachanga Resort Casino. Visit pachanga.com. Yes, you will need to be wearing your mask. There you go. <laughs> safety going right here. You say safety. I love it. Reaction. Instant reaction right there. And then I can drink. No, actually, I can't do that. There we go. Well, what are you drinking tonight? What's your choice? Well, that's the big question here, uh, Kirsten, because I have already started. I got my beer here, so I can continue with that. I love it. But I okay. thought, because we invited people. Look, this is the after party. This is Bolts After Dark. B A D. Yes. Bad. I got this. That's tequila. Oh, and okay. This, well, all right now. That's Go ahead. some bourbon. So you tell me. Uh, am I keeping it going with the with the beer? Do you want me to pour some bourbon? Do you want me to pour some tequila? What should we be doing here? So, like, should we be playing a game? Are no, we going to have a word, it's maybe? The first time. It's the first time. What do you think is the best? What do you think fits best? Like, for me, I think it's beer because of Coach Lynn's queuing up, just kind of keeping it real, right? Hey, so what? Yes. I wrap my wedding fork with a napkin, and I'm dialing up this delicious-looking chicken on an open flame. Like, that's I was like, that's <laughs> maybe kind of like a barbecue night, right? But did you peep the special, the, the fine china with the paper towel wrapped around it? Okay. Do you so think that I gives more flavor to the chicken? Okay. I think it does. I think it does. Okay. Um, I think, you it's know, a question. Look, the man's from Texas, you know, guns <laughs> up, Texas Tech. So the guy knows how to barbecue. So you know what? You're right. That's uh, fancy china. I'm going to go fancy yeah. tequila. And that'll be, I got uh, my fine wine, so there you go. that's what right, we're well, doing cheers. over here. Uh, cheers. cheers. Yes. Go. So tell me, greatest show. <laughs> oh, my bad. Greatest show over ever. Here. Clink. Greatest go. show got ever. It. It's here. What, come on, like, what were you thinking? What, what I are take your away? thoughts? Here's what I take away, yes. Kirsten. Um, I have been very fortunate to be around Coach Lynn for, for three seasons, and obviously I'm biased. Uh, I, you know, I've been calling Charger games for those three years since he was hired as the head coach. I was hired at the same time uh, as their mm-hmm. play-by-play guy for the first year up in Los Angeles. He's a remarkable guy. He's, he's a leader of men, and I think that really mm-hmm. shone through. Like, to me, the – the, the moment that kind of, you know, I mean, look, football's different than any other sport. And it, it, there's a reason why just speeches and those motivational speeches, pregame, halftime, postgame, whatever they may be, continue to make way. I mean, there's an entire show built around it on the NFL Network and NFL Films does it of these coaches' speeches. So I think when he said, you know, you know men, we have two opponents this season. We've got our schedule yes. and we've got this pandemic and we got to beat them both. Mm-hmm. Like that to me just – it, it kind of made me feel like, yeah, you know what? They're going to pull this off. And, and the Chargers and everything they kind of set up and everything we saw with the protocols that they've introduced um, suggest to me, like, man, this is – they are not messing around. And this is the right guy to be the leader um, for this group of guys that is going to go into this season and try to, A, as he said, conquer a schedule, and B, mm-hmm. make sure that they are the most responsible team in the NFL to conquer this pandemic over the course of a 16-game slate. I honestly, I couldn't agree more. And even just hearing, you know, that he had tested positive, and so he has a true insight of what, how to really handle this and how to take the yeah. best, you know, work with the players to keep them protected at all costs. So you're right. Everything that was handled yeah. in that episode was so thought out, so well done. And now tell me, what did you think about all the players uh, getting tested all the time, you know? Could you imagine yeah, I mean, having been, to deal uh, with that? Full disclosure, I've been tested twice, so I've, okay. I've had to go through it. I've had one test where the, 
you know, Q-tip got jabbed <laughs> somewhere like right around here. It felt like is where they, uh, they put it in. The other one was kind of like what Casey had, and we'll get to that, I know, mm-hmm. in, a, in a second. So, look, it's, it's um, I wish it wasn't the star of Hard Knocks. I, I wish 20 minutes of a 60-minute episode wasn't dedicated to testing, spacing, and team meeting rooms. Um, you know, but it's, as coach said, it's chaos, you know, 2020 is chaos and we got to embrace it and it is what it is. So I guess I can say at least relatable, um, you know, Mm -hmm. unfortunately it's relatable for me to to have to see what they're going through. 100%. And I mean, look, while it did take up some time, while it's not kind of the highest, it brought really funny moments. So let's check out, this is Casey Hayward when he was getting this test. So good. Okay. I'm nervous. No, just be relaxed, deep <laughs> breath. I promise it's not difficult. No, I had it before, so I know it's bad. Oh. Is that bad? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get, I gotta okay. get prepared. <laughs> no, for real, I gotta get prepared. Just deep breath. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all ever had it? It ain't, it ain't fun, is it? It ain't fun. You had it? Yep. Okay. One. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. I prom. No. Don't do it. I ain't try to. <laughs> See? That's not bad. It's good? Yeah, that wasn't the worst one I had. <laughs> No, like I am that dramatic when it comes to these types of tests. So I felt everything about that. I was tested as well. It wasn't the one that was like shoving into my brain. However, that was me preparing for my yeah. test. So. And by the way, I hope you like me embracing the thing there for a moment. Uh, just full brick man is what I was there. Just for just blend into the background is what I was doing before we come on. But yeah, I mean, look. Eh, it's weird, right? It's, uh, it's uncomfortable, um, and, and it's something that these guys go through once, sometimes twice a day. Yeah, for sure. So I actually caught up with Casey ahead of this episode, and when I, I just wanted to know. I was like, what do I need to look out for? And he did give me a heads up on this scene, okay. but it was so much better, so much better watching it live. So check this out. This is Casey and I's conversation. Hey, Casey. How are you? Hey, I'm good. How you <laughs> Is there anything that we should look forward to kind of on the show that's been filmed thus far? <laughs> uh, you might see me on down the first one doing some goofy, some goofy stuff. <laughs> like what? Are you singing or like what? <laughs> uh, no. The first day we're going to get tested. And I've been tested for the COVID before. And when I got tested before, the lady stuck it all the way up my nose when I was back home. Like you she were dramatic. It, she stuck it. No, she stuck it all the way up here. No, no, no lie. And when she did it, it brought tears in my eyes. So she was ready with. She was already <laughs> ready with with tissue. Like here you go. Like I know this. This is gonna happen. So when I got here, and I was like, the lady was about to go. Like hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. And like I was being like I was being super dramatic, but I was for real. Listen. And, I feel you on that because I had it taken and I almost, I almost freaked out. Like, but it wasn't as bad. But prior to her going in, I wasn't really letting her go in. So they gonna have that on there. They show you me. were that person that's kind of like holding it back and trying not to. Like- yeah, I'm the, I'm the person that was moving every time she was getting close. Like, nah, nah. It's literally like every time you're getting a COVID test or a like a strep throat test. The natural reaction is truly to just be like, please don't, please don't hurt me. Yeah. It's just any of it. Nobody likes getting poked and prodded. You know what? If that's your take, that's a takeaway from uh, even, even giant men who play football with, with wrists, the size of you band coffee cans. They don't like getting a Q-tip jammed up their nose. No, I do. (laughs) To me, it like humanized them. No, it's like, it was one of those moments. Like they're just like us, you know, they got fears. They have fears. Right. Well, this is. (laughs) 100 so this is now what i'm very excited for we have our first ever guest on hard knocks uh, show live yeah 
our first guest coming in, the one and only Kay Adams. So please, everyone, a round of applause. I won't be too loud because I don't want to mess up your ears. <laughs> Big fan. But a it. round of applause for our first guest ever. Swing her Kay in. Adams. Oh, yeah. There we go. Oh, hey, Kay. <laughs> Welcome okay. to the party. Let's go. Literally, I'm straight so off the so Emmys. So I'm pumped. Good to see you, Matt. It's good to see you, Thank Kay. You. Do I, is, I can't see Kirsten. Kirsten, you can't, you can't see me? No. Well, oh, oh, wow. oh well, darn. you look striking over there. Oh, so. darn. But hopefully she's there. Hi, Kirsten. Yes. Hey, girl, how are you? Good. I think I can kind of hear her. But hey, it's 2020 right. technology is another thing. What's exactly. going on, guys? Listen, Nightmare it's well. Zoom. It's We're here. This is kind of the new normal. We're just going to figure it out. We'll make it work. What would you think? Okay, what'd you think? What, uh, get, oh my gosh. Bang, first, first impression, favorite part of Hard Knocks. I, I feel like I'm not objective enough to really be the right person for this program right now because you okay. know that I love the Chargers. So to have this yes. squad with this coach who I finally see getting love, he's basically trending on Twitter right now, like my mind is exploding. Uh, in this time where there's nothing to look forward to but this very thing that happened tonight and what's about to happen a month from now, it's the best thing. I needed it. So badly, Chargers are killing it. They're vibrant personalities, veterans, young guys. Derwin James is back. He's healthy. I got to talk to Anthony Lynn this morning, so I know how pumped he is. So, oh my gosh, I'm like, I'm through the moon about this squad this year and Hard Rocks, of course. Yeah, and uh, and no doubt, I think one of the the things that comes out of it too, Kay, and I know you're getting peppered with questions. You're on Good Morning Football every day, and I would assume walking around the big town there in New York City, people are asking, mm-hmm. are we really going to pull this off? Are we really going to have a season? And that kind of was the co-star, right? This is everything the NFL is doing, the amount of money, the amount of resources that they are pouring into COVID protocols. I think it was good for people to maybe see that and recognize how serious they are about taking on this pandemic along with playing a season. And I appreciate that. It's really what I've been looking at uh, and looking for more than anything with talking to coaches, talking to players, listening to all sides. And yeah, I do you know, live and breathe it with the NFL. If it has never been, it's never been anything other than the player safety fan safety being number one and paramount. That's from Dr. Sills, that's from the commissioner, that's from the coaches. You saw it, you know, we're talking about walkthroughs and the importance of even in walkthroughs, hey, if we can put on our masks then, let's do it both both sides doing that. So I also can't wait to see this juxtaposition between what the Rams are doing and McVay, the young coach and Mm -hmm. Anthony Lynn, what the decisions and the protocols and procedures they decide to put in because all 32 teams are having the same disadvantage piled onto their plate. How are they going to deal with it? Uh, and who's going to make it an advantage at the end. And really the more disciplined team, as Anthony Lynn told me this morning, that's the one that's going to come out on top. Yeah, 100%. no doubt. And um, no doubt. And certainly it was great, like you said, Kay, to see him uh, to see him shine in this. You know him well. Kirsten, I mean, you know him, I love well, him. obviously. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's great to see him get this opportunity to display that personality. Was there anything that you saw that stuck out to you about kind of I, just I, I, him Kirsten's on the talking, show? I cannot. Oh, That's okay. Matt's going to gonna relay. All right, here we go. Uh, I'm the translator. <laughs> Love it. Anything that stuck out to you when you were watching the show, is, are you going to finish that, or is that, is that a period? Was that a comma? Um, where are we at, Kirsten? I'm, I'm, re- I'm no, 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 you're it. on it. it no, no, it's you perfect, because you know what? <laughs> you, you pass it to me, it's and like then I take it. It's like tossing it. Yes. And I hand it to Kay. So here we go. I'm taking it from you. Anything that stuck mm-hmm. out beyond coach and COVID that you took away from the show, Charger-related? Yes. There we go. Um, I was looking for who's going to be that leader. I asked Coach that this this morning, and it was sort of uh, put into play. Who's going to be the leader that steps in for Philip Rivers? I thought it was very interesting. I mean, the entire uh, the entire rookie quarterback situation, where you had players out there talking about his ball, how great he was, how they haven't seen that in a long time. A little shade thrown at my boy Philip Rivers, but a lot of confidence in Herbert and what he can do. I mean, right after I watched Hard Knocks, I pulled up the Chargers schedule and was like. Okay, I know Tyra, where, when could they put this kid in? When could they decide, you know what, we're going to be competitive. We've got the defense to do it. And we're going to need somebody to go out there and make score some points. And that might come week five against the Saints, in my opinion. Or the week before yeah. against the Buccaneers. I mean, no doubt. I think if it were up to, to coach and everybody, if Tyrod's still starting, or Tyrod, as we learned a couple seasons ago on Hard <laughs> yes, Knocks, right? Not Tyrod, but Tyrod, um, <laughs> that, that he would end so up being say. the starter. For the entire season as they make a, uh, a playoff push. For people that don't know, I know I'm going to put our producers on the spot here, but we put together, um, we just kind of threw together a, uh, a bio of yours, of just some kind of notes and, and nugs 
as it oh, relates to, to Kay Adams. So I don't know if we can flash that, but from my memory, here yes. we go. Host of Good Morning Football on NFL Network. Uh, we will we'll host yes. at St. Louis Cardinals back in the day. That's an interesting one to put up there. Is that a check? That is a check. It happened 2011 okay. World Series. I have a ring, baby. Oh, how about that? Fancy <laughs> nice. championship ring in the safety deposit box. Uh, Bears mm-hmm. fan, born in, born in Chicago in a tree one, two, couple two yeah. tree decades there, but secretly loves the Chargers. Check. Ch- Matt Money Smith, what Check. can't you do? That was a flawless <laughs> impression of Chicago. Well, you, what because can't you just do? like, just like you, I too was born on a South Side. Um, first ever guest on Hard Knocks Post Show Live. We know that's a check. Uh, you were on the Late Show with Craig, with Craig Ferguson, <laughs> and his thick accent. Uh, yeah. Do you really speak? Do you really speak fluent Polish? I do. Yeah, it's my first language. My mom does not really speak English. How about that? Still, and you hate the smell. You know. Of Chicago. bacon. So I've, as a, as a uh, guy who was born and raised in a great city of Chicago, I have to ask, um, what is your favorite pierogi? Uh, I'm going to go ruskia. That is just cheese and, uh, and, and potatoes. They're the standard. I like them fried a little yeah. bit after you make them and boil them. That's, yeah, that's my stuff for sure. I love it. We are my- simpatico. I just love that my, my, my life's work is that I don't enjoy the smell of bacon. Yeah, I, I almost wanted to skip why? over that. And that I was but on why? Craig Ferguson. Like, those are my two, like, okay. oh, you've made it, sister. Kirsten just passing, said. Passing the sound. Why? Why do you hate the smell of bacon? There we go. I have now tran- I've now transferred that. And she said it just like that. Uh, I just think it's. Uh, really overpowering. It smells. Mm. It's more like what. It more like it smells like what it looks like, and it looks like I'm eating boiled skin or fried skin, and that does not sound appealing Fair. to me. Sorry. Fair. And okay. uh, full disclosure, I thought your answer was going to be because anytime I smell bacon, I want to just scarf down mountains of food because it, to me, bacon just smells like hey, <laughs> it's on. We are we are going to get after it. This is pork fat, and I don't care. <laughs> And, uh, and it's time, it's time. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't mean to, uh, activate your gag reflex, but let's go to, <laughs> let's go to how, by the way, how, how did you become a, a secret Chargers fan? Cause obviously born in, uh, in Chicago and being a bear fan, that's yeah. typically something that doesn't just last for life. It gets passed on generation to generation. So what, what's the story behind your, your love of the bolts? Are you looking for me to say I'm a glutton for pain as a Bears fan growing up in Chicago and then the Chargers and their heartbreaking seasons in right. recent memory? Uh, no, that's not it. I just always, when I, you know, it's really what happened when I started working on Good Morning Football. And I thought to myself, what, what's going to differentiate me falling in love with the team? Like, what's the criteria for me to really, on the show for three hours a day, year after, you know, year after year, day in, day out, deal with people on Twitter and... Uh, and what's the criteria for what that team is going to look like? And to me, it came down to just being a complete team, it's like up, up and down. So for me, that's two teams in the NFL for the past four years, the Saints, offense, defense, leadership, stability, all of it's complete. And I thought the Chargers were really that. Before they had that ridiculous season back in, what was it, 2017? Now it's been a while since they had a really great season. But uh, yeah. when that was all going on, it was the defense was really coming to play. And so it was the offense. And there was a balance there with the run game. That was working, so I. That's why I just sort of fell in love with them. And Philip Rivers is just the sort of character that you you become enamored with easily. Coach Lynn coming along three years ago, now entering his fourth year, definitely helped tilt the scale uh, in the direction towards the Chargers. I just didn't love how much love every other team in the AFC West was getting when I thought that um, LA had it on every level, talent-wise, and it was just heartbreak after heartbreak after heartbreak after heartbreak for a while there. I think you missed one after heartbreak. I think mm-hmm. you put four in there. I think we needed a fifth one <laughs> to make it completely accurate. Um, in terms of the, uh, the season that is upcoming, uh, Kay, and kind of how we're going to try to figure this all out, um, as it yeah. relates to that AFC West that you just mentioned, some people are saying that it's the, the toughest division in football. Uh, some people point to the, the NFC South with the Saints, with the Falcons, with the now Tom Brady Buccaneers. Yeah. Uh, your thoughts on kind of the AFC West. And, and like you said, you know what this defense looks like. You talked to Coach Lynn today. You know, I mean, the, the quarterback, look, I don't need to spell it all out for you. You know, what, what do you make of the AFC West race and how the Chargers fit into that puzzle? I mean, the Chargers defense, I think, is, is 
the best. I mean, the Broncos might come and do something with Fangio, uh, but, but as far as what the Chargers have with Derwin James coming back with all the additions, I'm going to go ahead and say they have the best defense. Does that matter when you have Mahomes in your division? Is it just always going to be mm-hmm. Mahomes' division or the New yeah. Patriots? They might be the sneaky team. There's the Broncos. I lo- I do like the Broncos. Sorry, Chargers fans. You have to watch out for them. And what they've got on offense, Drew Locke, he ended his first year really nicely. Now they added all that pressure and all those weapons. And Melvin, who knows your squad pretty well, so there's something to be looking out for there. But Anthony Lynn, you know, what he's got in Eckler, he, he's a, Anthony Lynn wants to run the ball. And he wants to protect the ball, and he wants to yeah. not turn the ball over, and that's what he's got in Tyrod Tyrod. So maybe that changes Tyrod, everything Tyrod. because he, yeah, he gets whatever he's wanted yeah. for years now. So it might change the entire. I mean, it's going to change the entire complexion of this team for sure. So what are you drinking right. there? You know what? I uh, I started with beer, <laughs> and then um, Kirsten and I discussed it because we were like, you know yes. what? Anthony Lynn is. Um, he was he was you know kind of based in that chicken with his wedding ch- with his wedding uh, flatware. So I was like, well, maybe it's kind of fancy. So I went with my fancy bottle of tequila here. So I'm just kind of to be honest, I'm sort of double fisting um, <laughs> on the first episode of Hard Knocks. So which means I'll probably be fired uh, at the end of this, and there'll be another co-host with Kirk- Kirsten next week. But uh, I no, think what the heck? Let's let's celebrate Wait, the return have... of Hard Knocks. Yes, we've got one more t- round Wait, of telephone. Yeah, one more. One more. What are you looking forward to most? on this season of Hard Knocks. What are you looking forward to most on this season of Hard Knocks, Kay? Oh, man, great question. I mean, the cuts are always what you're there for, right? That's the bread sadly, and butter right? of, of, of what it is, sadly. Just how they handle it. Like, that was a perfect... HBO does such a tremendous job. Just having that kid come in there. Yeah. My Probably my favorite part tonight shows Anthony Lynn and how, what coaches deal with, and it's he's a great man. Then him walking into Telesco's office and saying, hey, put that guy on the list. I like him. (laughs) He's got fire. He's hungry. That was so cool. That was so badass to see him be Mm -hmm. like that and act like that. I want to see that guy. I'm looking forward to that guy getting a call back, getting Mm -hmm. there's room on the roster for some reason, nothing crazy, of course, but he gets gets another chance uh, and makes the play. There's going to be so much turnover and so much roster change this season that we might see play out. Uh, And then I'm really just looking for the juxtaposition between Lynn and McVeigh and how they're going to run this and deal with this COVID thing the entire time. Yeah. Other than that, and my eyes are on Melvin Ingram. He's the I best. Mean, he is, well, uh, thank he is you. entertainment <laughs> in, uh, in human That's form. Best. Kirsten just said Excellent. thank you. I real quick. Yes. I real quick. Thank you. Real quick. Just want to say real quick. Uh, in and out. Best burger chain in America. Yes or no? Ooh. No. How dare you? We're done with you. I can't I have to agree. I I'll, you'll, I'll explain to you, and you'll understand why All right. in like a month. But there's a, okay. there's a reason I'm saying it. I got you. That works. Under- <laughs> hey, I ain't, listen, it's a very I ain't like, stepping on endorsements. It's a very like, yes, it's a very like Drew Brees kind of a reason. Okay. Like, listen, so there I'm we not go. Stepping on but it. no, I'm... it's not the best burger. Okay, that's fine. Kay, your tie dye is sweet. We appreciate you coming on. You're the first ever guest on Hard Knocks Post Show Live. I'm so sorry that Kirsten's uh, questions had to be taken <laughs> from me and delivered to you. But uh, we always love watching you on Good Morning Football. Awesome show. Watch it every morning. And uh, thanks for yeah. taking some time. Pretty late here. 1130 your time. And you got to get up early. Holy cow. Yes, I just thought of that. And I, I do. And I almost I said a no, curse. No, it's word. all good. It's all good. Don't curse. <laughs> just keep drinking that tequila. Yeah. Um, Kirsten, I hope I get to see you <laughs> next time I come on. You are an absolute yes. gem. And I'm so happy that Thank you get you. to do this show when I will be watching every week because you are a star that will be taking my job sometime soon. <laughs> No, you should you take mine first. Make a so big, she's come for me. I got take, big shoes to fill. Take his job and not mine. Exactly. Because, yeah. She's gonna work her Kirsten, way through the squares. Is how it's Kirsten going. Kirsten and I met uh, several years ago and worked together. And the day I met her, I was like, "Oh, here we go. Yeah. She is an absolute star." So I'm really glad she's here. Thank I, you. Uh, I felt the same Thank way you, when Kay. I met her in Mexico City. Uh, so hey, look, we all embrace the inevitable. <laughs> Kay, you're the best. Thank you for doing yes. it. Bye guys. Good night. Go Bye. Chargers. Let's go. Exactly. Let's go Bolts. Yes. I don't know how to get out. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Yes. Don't try. Cheers. I think yeah, it cheers. is time Thank for like our go. second. Sorry about having to be the middle person show. there. Kirsten, hopefully. No, uh, listen. We'll telephone. Moving telephone forward. was like one of the greatest games back in the day. <sighs> you could have really made up whatever. You could have really made up whatever question. Yeah, I really could have. <laughs> so she actually wants to know this. No. Thank you for not doing that. So thank you. But no, guys, now it's time for our fan question of the day powered by Pachanga Casino Resort. 
All right. Let's get got... this going. Uh, Here's what it says. Uh, what <laughs> What would you guys buy if you signed a Joey Bosa-sized contract? Ooh. Matt? I'll let you go first, Kirsten. I've been doing a lot of talking. Um, so you why have. Don't you, uh, um, let why me don't see. If I could... It. I would buy it. My dream house. Which is where? You just have so many options. Well, I mean, like, I do like living in LA, so I'd want to stay. You have so many options. I feel like my, I'd have to invest. That's like the responsible thing to do is invest some money. Come on, you can park it in high rate (laughs) savings at 1.7%. You're fine. You'll cash in on 135 million bucks. You don't have to invest. Just park it. Park it in the S&P. High, and high rate savings and you're good. <laughs> but That's boring. The real question is, is like, do I get it immediately or do I have to like work yeah. for an additional I mean, he got what, X 70, number? That's I what I'm saying. 70, 78 million at signing. So that's get, your contract. Yes. You got 78 million bucks to spend. I'm buying a house. I'm buying a G wagon and I'm just living my best wow. life and traveling the world. Okay. How about that? How about I'm going to buy, uh, I'm going to buy spots at pretty much every great wave in the world. I'm going to buy a spot in Portugal. I'm going to buy a spot in Fiji. I'm going to buy a spot in Costa Rica. I'm going to buy, <laughs> you know, I'm just going to stay here in Seal Beach because I love the wave here. So yeah. And then, yes. uh, and then I'm good. Oh, on a private plane. Actually, no, I'll subscribe to a service for the private plane that will then take me to yeah. all the waves that I just want to continually surf in a nice, sweet rotation. That's what I'm going to do. I love that. that and sounds- you know what? I'm going to uh, not have to stress over my three children's 529s anymore. So there's that, too. That's a huge bonus. Are you also going to buy a boat with a, a special no. name to oh, it? Oh, God, no. No. you not. <laughs> you got to have a friend that has a boat. Yeah, I'll, I'll ride Joey Bosa's double swipe. That's what I'm doing from now on. That was, by the way, a huge highlight of Hard Knocks. God love the HBO people for featuring Joey Bosa's super dry, sarcastic, just, I mean, lickety split wit that he displays and i have come to absolutely adore over the three years that i've gotten to know him well let's bring in our next guest shannon Furman, nfl film senior producer to give us really the inside scoop of what goes into putting this show together welcome to the show how are you i'm doing well how are you guys doing great we're living the dream you know no complaints so you (laughs) first and foremost you know, we have to talk to you about this. You've now been working on this show for 10 years. Is that correct? Uh, I've been on location for the past six, but I've been working okay. on this show since I started at NFL Films. So I'm headed into my 17th season right now. Whoa. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's a big number. 17. Yeah. Fantastic. I know. It's kind of crazy. Since being that I'm only 30 years old, no, lies. <laughs> I believed it actually. I'm not kidding. I believed it too. I was, I was like, wow, <laughs> she's really been you go girl. That's, <laughs> Ultimate <geez>. hustler. <laughs> I, Congratulations, I, by the way, on, uh, on a heck of a first episode. Uh, very you. cool. And certainly, I would imagine, very unique from your experience in those 17 years to have a first episode come out looking like this. Yeah, everybody who's kind of asked us, like, what do you think of the first episode? I think that's the first adjective we use is different. It's very different from anything we've done in the past, but we're all really proud of it. What were the challenges of having to, you know, focus on two different teams? Usually it's one team for the season, but this year, not only you have the challenges of the pandemic and filming in that sense, but now telling two different stories and picking what goes in the shot. That's probably hardest for the people at home, honestly. Like, we have... So what we did this year basically is we're kind of saying we're operating at 150%. So it's like 75% at each camp. So in a normal year, we'd probably have a crew of about 40 people on location with one team. This year, it's 26 people with each team. Um, The biggest challenge probably for us right now is just uh, we have 13 people in tier two. So that was something that we had to petition the NFLPA for so that we just could do the show basically so that we could get the access we were allowed to do the show. So um, not that I ever took the PAs for granted or anything like that. I will never take a PA for granted ever again because we're running around with wires coming out our ears, carrying hi-hats, lenses, batteries, uh, because we're operating with the minimum amount of people to get the show done. So, but every day, I mean, we we're like a family. We've all been doing this together. We have a couple new people here this year. So we we'll, we look forward to this all the time, so everybody's willing to pitch in and help out. And what was your favorite right, moment of, the- of tonight's episode? Probably Casey getting tested. I think when Casey <laughs> yes. Hayward gets tested, 
it gets funnier every time I see it. I, I don't know. I mean, like, I could just watch that over and over again. It's so, And I told him, I was like, you have to stop tipping your head back so far. There's, like, no reason to give them your whole nostril like that. Like, just just sit there. And, and he said to me the other day that he tried that, and it was so much better. <laughs> so. That's funny. So what, good. Um, so now I go, hold on one second, money. It's no, funny that good, you say good. that just because we did do a Twitter poll that was brought to us by monkey fight night. And we asked the fans their thought on the best show moment. So they get, yes, there's our little monkey. <laughs> and this is what they said. The options were Melvin Ingram's arrival, Casey Hayward's test, Joey's boat, and Justin Herbert dropping dimes. That was their favorite moment. I have to agree with you. Mine was also Casey getting tested because just <laughs> he's so dramatic and I love it. <laughs> but it's so good. So it is always fun to see kind of what the fans think, kind of comparing the Wait, two. Uh, there it is. I will say oh, yeah. my favorite shot in the whole show, though, was in the Justin Herbert section. Um, we have a female camera person on our crew, which I know is rare. So I, yes. I, she's my favorite camera person to work with. Sorry, guys. I love you all, too. But, um, mm-hmm. yeah, she is, like, we work on another show called Hey Rookie Together. And it's, like, kind of just her and I traveling the country uh, working with the upcoming draft picks. And the things she does, I always tell her that she has, like, a different eye because she didn't necessarily grow mm-hmm. up watching football. So when she's shooting it, she's kind of just shooting it from her own perspective. And so that day she's, like, can I get behind the net? And I was like, sure, nice. go ahead. <laughs> so, and that was kind of what she came up with when she did that. So it was like, we saw it and we're kind of like, that was ridiculous. Like, so that's my favorite shot. It was shot that kind of, yep. It was the shot of the Hannah, show. It was yes, yeah, focused so on good. Herbert. And then the net comes into play as you see it sink through. And, you know, it's interesting, Shannon, because I was discussing this with the producers of, of our little dog and pony show here. Thanks to Monkey Knife Fight. <laughs> Uh, Hard Knocks post show live, and I said it's. I said this is a no brainer. It's going to be Herbert because every every fan loves the rookies. The rookies are the the salvation, right? They're the unknown. This is the single player that's going to come save uh, a franchise. And I would assume seventeen years doing Hard Knocks, you certainly have recognized that how rookies really play a prominent role in in Hard Knocks because it is the promise of what is to come. Yeah, I think. I mean, you're absolutely right. And then the years where you don't show the team's first round draft pick for whatever reason. Like that's all you're hearing about on Twitter is like, I mean, with the Buccaneers, there wasn't much going on with like OJ Howard. And then like, so people are mad, but with this year with Justin and stuff, I mean, he's been great. Um, A joke amongst the crew is like, we were 10 minutes into the first walkthrough and I texted my AD who was a college quarterback and told him, like, this is my ridiculously early prediction of the season, but I believe in this kid. He's going to be good. And he's like, why are you saying that already? And I was like, I don't know. I just like his demeanor. I like the way he speaks to his teammates mm-hmm. and the coaches. Like, I-, I believe in him already 10 minutes in. So, um, like, yeah, it made me excited. And, like, we have had a couple good rookies the past couple of years. But, like, last year people wanted Josh Jacobs. And right. for whatever reason, like, we, we mic'd him a couple times in the beginning, but he, he was more reserved and stuff. So we didn't want to, like, force it on him. And then a lot of – in a normal year, a lot of our characters are based on what happens in the games. And he wasn't getting a ton of playing time, right. obviously, last year in the preseason. So people didn't get to see as much of him as they wanted to. But So I hope this year we are able to give fans a, a look at Justin Herbert like we did tonight. And Kenneth Well, you Herbert had Abrams too. last year, though, and he was like a yeah. huge star of Hard Knocks. John was so great. They, it, like, yep. Yeah. He was, and Cleveland, Cleveland so, was kind of Abrams' sidekick. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's true, I guess. Riding the horses. So now I've <laughs> got to ask you, you know, it's been 10 years since Coach Lynn was on Hard Knocks in 2010 with the New York Jets. You were working on that show. You're now working with him this season. How much have you seen him grow just kind of comparing the times then and now? And we actually have a really great photo of him back then and him now. Like, how much have you seen a difference in him and where has he grown? I'm pretty sure I'm doing that interview in 2010. What? I think that was, I, oh, I nice. think I, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure. Um, that was when I first met him. Obviously I was a field producer on that show. I wasn't the director, but I was one of the field producers. So I was out there the first three weeks in Cortland and um, 
the funny story kind of behind that is his son, who coaches for the Texans now, um, played for Penn State at the time. And I'm a Penn State graduate. I have season tickets. So after we did the interview, I was like, your son played at Penn State? And he looked at me like I was crazy. He was like, like how do you know that? And I'm like, oh, I'm, well, I'm a season ticket holder. I'm kind of nuts. Like, I, he, we, we don't get recruits from Texas that often at Penn State. So I kind of knew his background. And um, we've stayed friends pretty much ever since then. Uh, he's actually, like, I helped him make a highlight reel from his career back at films, like, when he was still with the Jets. Um, so it's been awesome to see him grow. Like, I'm one of his biggest fans. I would joke with him. I don't know how he felt about it, but I was like, we kind of said at one point, like when I become the director of the show and your head coach, we're going to do this. And like, he said to me at the beginning of this, did you think we'd be wearing masks? I'm like, no, (laughs) definitely didn't think we'd be wearing masks doing this, (laughs) but it's been awesome to see him grow. And like, we're all rooting for him. It's great to see all the love on Twitter for him tonight too, because the whole crew loves him already. Also. When you met him back then, did you imagine he'd be the head coach today? I, I'm not surprised. I mean, he ha- he has a way with the players and stuff. So I think like saying that I, I've worked with a lot of coaches in the past six years as a director on the show. And like, I've never said that to any of them. So there was something obviously that like made us have that conversation even back then. So um, definitely not surprising. He has a way with the players and stuff. I mean, watching him coach the running backs on the field is like the highlight of my day. I love how he's so involved in that position group and like just wants to get in there every day and work with those guys. It's pretty awesome. I'm sure that's something you guys will see at some point in the next four episodes. Ooh. And off of that, I have to ask, what should we expect to see coming up? Yeah, I think we'll definitely probably get into his backstory as a player um, and kind of where he's come from. It's, it's crazy. Cause it changes every week. We're starting to look for like, I think we'll, do a lot more of the veteran stories um, this coming week, introduce you to some of the defensive backs on the chargers. They've been awesome to work with so far. So we have some, we've done some fun things with them. Um, So I think we'll get a look at them hopefully next week or in show three. I know we really want to tell Austin Eckler's backstory. He would have been like the perfect hard knocks candidate a couple of years ago. Um, So we definitely, that's also a thing that's been talked about a lot is like, how does a guy like Austin make the team in a year like this when you don't have games to showcase what you can do. Um, So I know that's something coach Lynn is really like, how do we do this? We have to make practices like competitive and figure out ways to find the the Austin Ecklers of the world. So we definitely really want to tell Austin's story because we think it's important in a year like this. Yeah. I mean, the simple answer to that, that question is he doesn't. He, he does not make the team. I mean, because he really made the team based on that fourth preseason game. I mean, he lit it up against the 49ers in that fourth, and that was really, you know, what we had heard, the tipping point of who they were trying to to figure out. I, I do quickly want to – can we bring back that picture of Coach 2010 versus 2020? Because you asked the question, what's different? I'll tell you what's different. Look at his tent neck and his freaking pecs. <laughs> the dude's been killing it in the weight room in 2020. Is what the difference is. My goodness. He's been 10 years older. Good, living better. Right? That's what that is. He is freaking (laughs) inclined bench and tent necking it all day, is what the difference is. Jeez. (laughs) Look at that guy. I love it. (laughs) So good. Well, thank you so much, Shannon, for joining us. We really appreciate it. All of your insight. We're honestly lucky to have you on the show. So thank you. No problem. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah. Congratulations. Good night to awesome the fans. Show. <laughs> to the fans, thank you for joining us. We will be here same time, same place. Hold on, Kirsten. What's oh, in your glass? Okay. What's in your glass? What's left? The full Not glass. okay. <laughs> Not okay. <laughs> Not okay. I've been told I sometimes babysit my drinks, so I'll make sure to. Oh, okay. Are we chugging? Oh. Not okay. Mm. Empty. Oh yeah. Look at all that. That's all, left. all right. Well, that's I'm a not bu- you know. I'll trust. My- I'll trust you. <laughs> I'll trust you to dust it when we're off. <laughs> my classy high in wine, I will not chug. I need to savor every sip, okay? Yeah, that's the difference between us. Mine would have been two buck <laughs> chuck, and it would have been cool, just straight down. Okay, I'll be honest. It was probably like $10 from Target. Well, hey, whatever. <laughs> whatever makes you happy, right? Of course. All right, well, everyone, join us next time, please. Same time, same place. We will be here. Hard Knocks Post Show yeah. Live, powered by Pachanga Resort Casino. Bring a drink. We'll have some fun, and we'll catch you next time. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Love that guy. More of you next time. Less of me. That's the secret.
we'll, we'll work through the, you know, technology exactly. kinks. That's it's exactly. 2020. It's a pandemic. Uh, we should happens. not be surprised. It there happens. we go. Thanks. Th- enjoyed the heck out of it. Cannot wait for the next four. And a uh, big thanks to all the folks that were watching and participated in the poll. That's for sure. And thanks to Kay. Yes. Kay and Shannon. Yes. Awesome. Uh, that they were willing to do that, especially Kay getting up super early tomorrow and uh, hanging out with us at like 11, 1130 tonight. Yes. And we'll have some more exciting guests for you guys next week. Yeah. So we'll catch you next, next time. time. You're dusting that wine too. No excuses, Kirsten. Dust it.